Hey everybody, there is not a single person among my subscribers who has not tried a bounty bar at least once in his life. Today, we will prepare a bounty bar of a simply incredible size. Let's see what the original bar consists of. Outside, we see milk chocolate, and inside, coconut filling. We go to the store for all the groceries we need. The first thing you need to take is a lot of chocolate. We have 150 chocolate bars in the cart. Coconut shavings. You need a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. 20 kilograms. Nine kilograms of sugar. Citric acid. Coconut oil. Basically, that's it. Now we can head to the checkout. The check came out to $390. Let's start with the fact that we have a big sheet of wood. Using a ruler and a pencil, we draw everything. By hand, we round the corners. We have drawn the bounty form. Now we just need to cut it out with an electric jigsaw. Done. Now we take the plastic wrap and wrap it. We take three boxes of milk chocolates and a bowl. We crush the chocolate bars on the table, open them, and shake out the already broken pieces of chocolate into the bowl. We continue until the bowl is filled. Done. We put water in a saucepan. and put that on the stove. Then the bowl of chocolate on top. Now we melt everything in a steam bath, stirring occasionally. Chocolate is porous, so when it melts, it greatly decreases in volume. We add more. We put the melted chocolate on a board. We put the mold on the table. And we pour in the chocolate in portions. And smear it around. All until we cover the entire surface of the mold. Now we take a huge saucepan and all the coconut shavings that we bought. We open each pack and pour it into the bowl. Done, there's almost 20 kilograms of coconut shavings in the saucepan. Now you need four kilograms of coconut oil. We open the jars and put them in there as well. But now we need sugar and citric acid. We'll cook the syrup in two pots. We open a pack of sugar, measure 300 grams on the kitchen scale, and pour that into a pan. And in the second 300 grams, water is also needed. Measure 130 milliliters and pour it into the sugar. Now turn the stove on high and just wait until the syrup is cooked. Be sure to use a thermometer. As soon as the temperature has reached 107 degrees, we rearrange the pots, 
add a little citric acid and mix. We take a three liter jar and pour our syrup into it. Between each new batch of syrup, we wash the pan from the previous batch. Again, we measure everything and cook. And keep repeating this. Only one jar is filled. This isn't enough. After another four hours, we cooked eight liters of syrup. Now we just need to pour the syrup into the saucepan and mix. But then I realized that there would be very little filling. So we bought another 50 kilograms of coconut shavings, 10 liters of coconut oil, and 20 liters of glucose syrup from the store. All this cost $315. By the way, playing with the syrup in the bag is a great stress reliever. It is the fucking best. Pour one jar of the syrup into a saucepan. We open the glucose syrup and fill the jar with it to understand how much we will add. Pour the first three liters. Then another one and a half. Now you need to mix all this with your hands so that all the coconut shavings are soaked with syrup and oil. The mass is heavy and thick, so it's hard to mix. But after 20 minutes, I mixed it all the way through. Our chocolate has been frozen for a long time. We take the coconut filling out and dump it into the mold. Evenly distribute the mass with your hands. And pack it in. We open the bag of coconut shavings, pour most of it into a saucepan. This time we make a small crater in the coconut shavings. And that's where we pour into our syrup. And then the glucose syrup. We open the canister with coconut oil and pour out four liters. This oil is liquidy because it was in hot water. Again, we knead it all together, this time with four hands. Then we pour out the contents of the pan. And spread it around. Now we just need to make the final third batch Put it into the mold as well. It will have to be leveled more carefully so that the shape of the bar looks like a bounty. At first we did it all with our hands and then we carefully patted it with a board. Done after two hours of hard work on the molding. We got what we needed. We take all the remaining chocolates, crush them on the table, open them up, and throw them back into the bowl.
and into a steam bath. When all the chocolate has become liquid, pour it over the bar and smear it around with a spatula. Then pour out the second bowl of chocolate. Cover up all the gaps. And finally, the third bowl. I ran out of all the chocolate that I bought. I had to go to the store again and buy a lot more chocolate bars. This cost us $192. The chocolate that flowed down the sides of the bar, we collected from the bottom back into the bowl. We'll just melt it down again. That's how many chocolates we have to crush. To speed up the process, we'll use two bowls. Done. We send them to the steam bath. We wait until it melts and we break more. And we're left with two full bowls of hot chocolate, but that's not all. We take the oil and we add a lot of it to each bowl. Thanks to the oil, the chocolate will become more liquidy. We mix everything well and pour it into the bar mold. Just look at how beautifully the chocolate fits. Pour out the second bowl of chocolate. And distribute it. Even more chocolate now. We tried to make little curlies on top, like on a bounty bar, but it didn't work out well enough to make them beautiful, so we poured the final bowl of chocolate on top to smooth out all the irregularities. After three days of work until two in the morning, our huge bounty bar is finally ready. After counting all the things that we used, it turned out that this mega monster weighs 134 kilograms, and there are 643,000 calories in this bar. That's a lot. Let's finally cut it. The chocolate layer is carefully cut with a hacksaw, and for the filling, I bought a hefty machete. We cut through the bar. Hey there, everybody. Surely everyone knows what a Kinder Milk Slice is, right? Today, we decided to make one on a truly unimaginable scale. But first, let's open it up and see what it's made of. Here, we see two chocolate biscuits and a bunch of cream. It's obviously very tasty, but the cream is a little chemically. Let's go to the store. We decided to split the purchase up into two stages. Today, we're doing the first. We'll buy all the groceries we need to make huge biscuits. The first thing we need is chicken eggs, as many as 840 of them. The next thing we'll need is sugar. This will take up to 30 kilograms. 11 kilograms of cocoa powder, two kilograms of baking powder, 25 kilograms of flour, 13 liters of oil. With all this, we're headed to the checkout. First purchase cost us $245. Now we'll cook the biscuits in our huge oven. But we need to preheat it so it has time to warm up. Now we open up the boxes of eggs.
We take out two trays and put them on the lower part of the table. We need 420 eggs for one batch. We put two containers on the table, one smaller, the other bigger. Now we take the eggs and separate the yolks from the whites. It took us about one and a half hours to separate all the eggs. Done. We set the egg whites aside for now. We take the sugar, open it, and pour 15 kilograms into the yolks. Now, using a cement mixer, we beat the yolks into the sugar. until the whole mixture turns white. Now we take six liters of oil, open it, and fill her up. If we use any less, our biscuit just won't hold its shape the way we need it to. Then we mix well. Ready for our next step. We need five and a half kilograms of cocoa powder. We open it and pour it out. And now we mix. It takes another 20 minutes or so to mix it all up and we're left with a very thick dough. Now we need to carefully pour in six and a half liters of boiling water. We'll mix this in so that the dough thins out a bit. Done. Now we need flour. We'll start by pouring in the first five and a half kilograms. And mix it up. Then we'll add another seven and a half kilograms. Now we add in another kilogram of baking powder. And we get a nice, even dough. Our pot is filled to the brim, so we'll take a big wash basin and move our dough into it. Now let's take our egg whites and pour some of them into another saucepan. We tried beating them with our industrial mixer, but it didn't work out. I guess it's pretty impossible to beat that many egg whites into a dense mixture. So, we decided to use a self-mixer that does everything itself. Let's pour a little bit of the egg whites into each of them. And turn it on. The process has started. After about five minutes, we get this foam. That means it's time to add sugar. We'll mix this for another two minutes, and then we can move these whipped egg whites into the chocolate dough. Now let's carefully mix it with a spatula so that none of the air bubbles come out of the whipped mixture. We're going to load in our next portion of egg whites. Move it back to the bowl. And mix. As a result, you're going to have a really lush dough. With the second half already in the basin, we do the same thing. Now our biscuit dough is ready. But what do we bake it in? We got help from a friend in a workshop. They drafted up a drawing on a computer which sends the blueprint to a huge machine that uses a laser to cut out the desired piece of sheet metal. We take our piece of metal from the machine and cut out the places for bins with a grinder. Now we bend the edges until we get a box shape formed. Then all the seams are welded together and we're left with a giant baking sheet. Now we pour oil all over it and smear it around with a brush. We take out some parchment and cover the baking sheet with it. 
thanks to the oil, our parchment will stick well to the sheet. So we cover the whole thing. Done. Now we pour out dough onto it and level it out. We transfer the baking sheet into the oven and push it in. We'll bake this for four hours at 180 degrees. Then we turn off the oven and leave the biscuit in there until morning, so it has time to set and thicken. The next morning, we take it out. It's risen a little and completely baked. Now we need to make sure the tender part of the biscuit is at the top. We figured out the best way to do it is by applying plywood to the top and two planks to the sides. We'll fix these together tightly with clamps. We want to remove the baking sheet for now, so we put another piece of plywood on the table with four bricks on it and turn the whole thing over. We remove the clamps and gently lift off the baking sheet. We end up with a beautiful biscuit that weighs as much as 50 kilograms. And it only took two days to prepare it. We'll set it aside for now. Now we need to knead the dough for another identical biscuit. Load it all into the oven, close the doors, and the next morning we have another biscuit, just as beautiful as the first one. It's time to go pick up the groceries to make the cream. The first thing we need is a lot of condensed milk. Six two-liter packages of milk. an unrealistic amount of Amish cheese, 80 kilograms. We'll need agar agar. We took 200 packages. Two kilograms of vanilla sugar. Three five liter jugs of water. We take all this to the checkout and bag it all up. Our second check came out to $506. We put the Amish cheese that we bought onto the table and opened them up. We have 80 kilograms of Amish cheese. All this needs to be ground up and preferably quickly. We've removed the front plate from the mixer and attached the meat grinder to it and the saucer on top. We open another plate and attach the blender. We take a package of cheese, open it, and pour part of it into the blender and the other part into the meat grinder. We close the blender and put a saucepan below the grinder and turn on the mixer. While we are pushing the cheese through the meat grinder, the blender is taking care of everything on its own. The only help it needs is to periodically move out the cheese curds. We ground it all using six hands until the cheese runs out. Three hours later, we have a whole pan of this cheesy mass. We take the tub of water and move the cheese mass into it. We open the vanilla sugar 
and pour it in. Now we just need the condensed milk. We open a bottle and pour the whole thing into the mixture. We made sure to buy extra, so there's a lot left. Now we use the industrial mixture to mix the cheese with the milk. We're left with a creamy mass. We take three jugs with water in a saucepan. Open the water and pour it out. Now we take agar agar, open it, and pour all 200 packets into the water. For now, just mix the agar agar and leave to soak for 30 minutes. We cut off part of the roll of industrial foil with a grinder and wrap it around the bottom biscuit in a circle. We fix all this together with tape. And to keep it all even tighter, we will also attach the boards on the sides with the same adhesive tape. It turned out to be such a good form for filling the cream that it doesn't spread. Put a saucepan with water and a gar gar on the stove. Boil for two minutes and pour in hot milk. Mix well. This liquid will make the cheesy mass harden and that way it won't be crushed under the weight of the second biscuit. Pour half into one basin and mix well. Now the second half. While the filling has not started to thicken, we quickly transfer it to the biscuits. Level the filling and leave it to cool overnight. The next morning, the cream is hardened. We remove the foil framework. We had a very tall layer of cream turn out. Finally, the big moment. All that remains is to put the second biscuit on the cream. Done. We finally made a Kinder Milk slice. All it took was six days. After calculating the weight of the groceries we bought, we found out that our huge dessert weighs as much as 210 kilograms and costs $766. Let's cut off a piece. This is the type of huge chunk that we're going to ship off to all of our friends and relatives. Look at what a huge sponge cake turned out inside. I put the cream on a piece of sponge cake, covered it with a second one, and now let's try it. The biscuit is almost exactly the same as the original, but the cream is different. It's so natural, made of cottage cheese and condensed milk, and in the original slice, a confusing mass with all sorts of thickeners. It was probably the longest and most difficult project we've had in recent times, and you have no idea how much work has been done behind the scenes. Calculations, testing different sponge cake recipes, cream. Well, if you want me to cook something else this large scale, on the same level as this, then like the video. As soon as we get 500,000 likes, we'll shoot a new giant meal. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Bye, everybody.